God, we thank you today, God. If it had not been for you who was on our side, God, we don't know where we would be today, Lord. That's why we're worshiping here, God. That's why you hear him crying out, God. God, because we are grateful people in this place, Lord, that realize, God, that, that you are the beginning. You're the end, God. And we, God, we appreciate you, Lord, God. And we realize, God, you didn't just leave us there, God, but you, you stay with us all the time, God. And we appreciate you in this place, Lord. Can somebody begin to clap your hands in this place and don't stop there, but somebody just begin to just magna. Come on, just begin to bless him in this place. Come on, set an atmosphere that's worthy of our Savior. Come on, don't worry about the music. Don't worry about what's next. Just come on, stay in this moment right here and just let an awesome God know that you, you saved the praise for this moment in time right here. It don't matter what your age is right now. It don't, it don't matter how young you are, how old you are. Just begin to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us and our souls cry out hallelujah. Is there anybody grateful in this place? All the grateful people begin to open your mouth and tell God thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord open up your mouth and just say hallelujah. Father, we take you in this place God. God, as we open up this service, Lord, I, I ask you to move however you want to move, God, and say what you want to say, God. Do what you want to do, God. Have your way in this place, God. Bless the praise and worship team as this time, God. Bless the musicians, Lord, as they, they usher you with us into your presence, God. Every song that they sing, God, whenever they open up their mouths, God, let you sing through them, God. Open up our ear gates, Lord, that we may hear a word from you, God. God, and as we move forward in this place, Lord, we move forward in the name of Jesus. Any distraction, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we will have the victory in this place, God, and we're going to give you the glory. We're going to give you the honor. It don't matter if we're here in the sanctuary or if we're watching online or if we watch listening on the radio, wherever we are, God, you get the glory, God. Somebody say, you get the glory, God. Come on, say, you get the glory, God. Say, you get the honor, Lord. Now tell God how much you love him all over this building. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you just clap your hands and bless God because he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be adored. He is worthy to be worshipped. The Bible commands us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Say, Jesus, 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 what a wonder.
Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. He's a wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
greatly to be praised. Wow, my goodness, Angie and choir, such a simple song. I mean, you don't take all day to learn that song, right? It's a very simple song. Great God we serve, great God. I mean, that's a simple song to know. Amen, the congregation, that's a, that's a simple song. That's one of those simple songs that you can learn. But the thing is, after you're singing it, and after you're thinking about it, see, when you, when, you, when you were younger, like your ages, you thought your parents knew everything, and then you got older, and then they don't know as much as you think they used to know. Amen. Uh, and then when you reach uh, uh, Brother Mike Lloyd's age, you know, they really lost something. But think about it. Now, we are, a lot of us are adults in here already. Great God we serve. Great God we serve. The world around us is trying to make us think that God does not exist. And that you are your own God. Ah, oh, how dumb. How idiotic. How stupid. Great God. How, how am I going to serve a God I can't, I can't even see? I talk to him every day, but I can't see him. Great God, what a mighty God we serve. Can I get a witness this very morning? I mean, really. Amen. When, when, when the Hammond is turned off, the keyboards turn off, and the drummer is no longer drumming, and the bass is no longer basing, amen. And just to sit down in the quiet and the still, as Pastor Elijah said a few weeks ago about meditating, just sit there and just be quiet. And think about how great our God is. To think about how great our God is. To think, to dwell on how great our God is. Not how great your problem is, but how great your God is. How great your God is. Your problem is going to go away. And King Nebuchadnezzar said, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Amen. What a mighty Awesome God we serve. Thank you, choir. Somebody say amen one more time. He's a great God. He's a great, 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 great God. A great God deserves a great praise. A great God deserves a great praise. A great God deserves a great worship. A great God deserves to be lifted up. A great God. A great God. What a mighty God. Help me. You got it. 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 A great God deserves it. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord forevermore. What a great, mighty God we serve this day. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I, I want to just thank God for just what he has done and is doing in all of our lives. We just came out of the uh, five days of uh, VBS, amen. And what a tremendous what a tremendous opportunity. Our teachers, our supporting staff, amen, and our young people, they just did a great, 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 marvelous job. I want to commend them. Superintendent Woodland, thank you. Amen. And all those people who work clean, they cleaned up, they, they set up, they fed them, they, they did all this and they did that. And, and, they, and Chef Bard, where did the chef at? Oh, he's hiding in the front. Chef Bard D, he, he made us here every, every night. He got some food for them. Amen. And the helpers and the aides. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. I want to thank God. And they're going to share momentarily with us. Amen. This, uh, this morning. Amen. But before they do that, we're going to, again, for those young persons and young people we have not prayed for as of yet, we have not, uh, we have not prayed. We've been praying all month long. We're going to ask momentarily that, that they will come to the front, not just for the young people, for those who work in the school systems as well in some various capacity. We're going to ask you to come up momentarily also. And we're going to pray for you. Amen. That the Lord will strengthen as we go forth. Amen. In this upcoming school year. Amen. To the parents, guardians, I know you're glad school's about to start. I'm grateful for that. Amen. Amen. But your, your child, your child, your, your child learns so much at home. My goodness, they learn so much at home. 
Hey, man, I need to give you, I need to give you a raise, parents. Let you learn. Josh, I'll give you a raise, bro. You got a raise, bro. Amen. Because, yeah, she's all right here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They learn so much at home, and I thank God for that. Amen. As we're doing. So I'm going to ask again, the, the young people who did not get prayed for, amen. Will you come up? We might have come on up, please. The young people who have not gotten prayed for, and the adults who have not gotten prayed for, those who are part of the school system. And I'm going to ask Professor Callender, amen, this, okay, uh, uh, I'm trying to figure if Noah will go to school or not. He does? Okay, I'm just checking it out. All right, amen, amen. Pa pa Pastor Larry, would you anoint them, please? Thank you. They're going to bring a mic home to her. I'll be fine. So glad, amen, they had a tremendous, amen, it, it's, it's a blessing, amen, to be able to stand there in the gap for our young people, our adults, amen, amen, whether you're a student, whether you're working in the school system, it is so imperative and important to understand the value, amen, the value, the value of, amen, our young people, amen, the value of young people, Amen. They grow up, y'all. They grow up. Amen. Our test was telling me today, you know, he has a size 12 sneaker now. Amen. That's that's right down my size. And I know he won't keep it long, so I'm just telling him, I'm getting my re my request in early. Amen. So we get rid of his size 12s and give them to me. Give them to me. Yeah, sweetheart. Yeah, baby. Get a, amen. One of the great things about, amen, come on, that's right. Bring, bring all those who, all right, those who are coming. All right, Worthy, I see you. All right. One of the things that's so important, again, would be this, this month and the next month, we're talking about standing in the gap. Amen. And I really want us to understand, amen, the responsibility that we have as parents, guardians, teachers, the, the responsibility we have even as members of the body of Christ. And be able to stand there in the gap for our young, young people, amen, and knowing that Robert, God watches over them, but he gives us, he gives us, he gives us, he gives you and I, amen, responsibility also. Here's someone else we want to anoint, get anointed, all right, thank you, sweetheart, thank you, amen, thank you so very much. Congregation, if you would just extend your hands towards these who are standing in their front right now, Professor Calder, please. As we go forward in this new school year, I always give the young people some words of encouragement and the workers also. Anybody can fall down, but it takes a man to get up. That's why you have number two pencils in school. What's on the end? An eraser. Make a mistake, erase it, and keep on going. In this church, this church, you know that you have a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. Everything, everything, everything to God in prayer. Father, as we come this morning, we stand as adults in the gap for these children. And we ask God that you start at home and bless the parents. Give them the strength that they need to raise these children. And Lord, follow them all the way through Christ's gospel then, and that they can carry what they've learned into the streets and get on that bus and go to school and carry it to school and remember everything that they have done. Not only do we pray for you on Youth Sunday, we pray for you every day. We pray that God will lift you up, that God will hold you, that God will give you the strength. Lord, we pray for the parents this morning. We pray for the teachers. 
We pray for the bus driver. We pray for the cleaning people. We pray for the teachers, the principal, because it takes everybody to raise the children. You may not remember everything, but you remember the days you've had here. God, help us. Help us, Lord, to stand in back of these children. God, guide them. Touch them one by one by one. From the head to their toes. Always learn that you have your parents and you have the church. God bless you. God have mercy on you. God anoint you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Can we say amen, somebody? Now before, serenity, serenity, now back up, back up, back up. I think they taught, you, taught us in school, just kind of stay there until you be dismissed, right? Oh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful, that's great. Listen. Now, uh, parents and guardians, we have some oil that we're going to give you so you can anoint your child or your, your, you be with those persons, and that will be given out next Sunday. That will be given out next Sunday. One per household. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're awesome. You are awesome. Not just the kids. The adults are awesome. Amen. You make the difference in their lives and be glorifying God and magnifying right now in Jesus' name. God bless you. you. May be seated this time, period. Can we say amen again for them? Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much in Jesus' name. Before I, the Christian education comes and does what they're going to be doing uh, today in Jesus' name, a couple of important points you need to hear very clearly, and I pray that you'll have your listening ears on. Amen. There will be no Zoom services at all this week, none whatsoever. There will be none on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Monday, nor Sunday. Well, yeah, we will have on Sunday, all right? All right, so keep that in mind. So you can call, you can Zoom in, but there will be none. That's important. So there's really nothing going on in the church as we prepare ourselves, amen, to go into the next month of September our new calendars for the month of September, the reading schedule are out. Pick one out. Amen. We're staying, we're staying the same thing, staying in the gap. Amen. Because we must stand in the gap. Amen. For one, for one another. Additionally, this is a very important announcement. You'll need to listen to this very, 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 very carefully. Next Sunday, uh, which is, scanners, the 3rd, I believe it's the 3rd of July. Amen. September. Good, good catch. Good catch, Angela. Man, the 3rd of September, we will be uh, participating in the Whitesboro reunion here in Whitesboro at the King Center. And so that being said, we're making some adjustment to our schedule here, amen, which means simply this. Next Sunday's service, next Sunday's service will begin at 9.30, 9.30. If you come at 10.30, just keep on walking through, drop your offering off, and just go right over to the King Center. 9.30, 9.30, one hour service, one hour service, 9.30, amen. So we're going to hit it real quick and real fast at 9.30. Now, don't feel bad about being 9.30. The school bus comes at 8.15. Correction, 6.45. in some areas. So no big deal, ain't no big deal, no big deal. I'm on my bicycle at 6 o'clock in the morning before the sun comes up. So ain't no big deal. But in any case, 9, so you hear that announcement five times today, five times. That's the first time all in one. What time is service next Sunday? Okay. Uh, okay, 9. All right, 9.30 on next Sunday. Our superintendent has done a wonderful job for our super, for our Christian education. And back to school. Amen. That's none other than Evangelist Donna Marie Wooden is going to come at this time. Amen. And she's going to kind of facilitate the rest of the services for us. 
in Jesus' precious name. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. We had an absolutely stellar VBS. Stellar VBS. We're, I'm not going to hold things up because the children are ready. The uh, teachers are ready. But I'm going to ask every person that worked in VBS, if they would please stand. If you were a teacher, if you were a kitchen person, if you were games, crafts, whatever capacity, security. They did an absolutely phenomenal job throughout the week. Chef Charles, the food was good every day. We had a great time. And so we're just gonna come and take a little time and show you what the children learned. We're gonna ask our, two of our teachers, um, Evangelist Pat and Evangelist Cooper, just to prepare themselves to give a little review from their class. But we're gonna ask everyone that's ready to participate, all of our children, the teachers, the singer, the dancers, everybody to come on up. We're gonna do it all at one time. So come on up. We're going to start with um, Minister White, and she's going to sing the theme song. I read all of the lessons, and I can't remember any of them right now. I read all of them. But I know it's Shine Jesus Light. So she's going to um, give you our theme song. We're going to ask um, Evangelist Cooper and Evangelist... Um, Mabry to come up as well. Going to grab a couple of your students, give a little review, pick a lesson. I know, I'm, I know they're looking at me like you didn't tell us this. I know they're, tell, I know they're looking at me like that. And then finally, our finale is going to be our dance. The children have been ready. They have been practicing their dance and they are going to dance for you. And I'm telling you, it's going to be something. It's going to be something. <laughs> now, is everybody here? Is Jamora here? Where's Jamora? Hmm? Coming up. Try to be. So I've asked Jamora to do something a little special for us. And um, we're going to ask two, her to have two, two standbys. Where's Serenity and Sincere? Okay, there we go. All right. Turn this way. Turn that way. Turn that way. What you going to do? Okay. Here, just step over here for now. work. Um, I'd like to thank Bishop for VBS and all the staff and Sister Donna for like organizing it for sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jamal. We had to train them up to say thank you. And he wanted it to come from the children. So Bishop, we thank Bishop just for his freedom and openness to allowing us to come together, giving us the church and trusting us not to break it down. We thank God for him. Thank God for all of our, our ministerial staff, for everyone that prayed for us. Again, it was a great week. 
I'm going to turn it over to Minister White Hands. Lord, everybody. Thank the Lord.
What do we say when we come together? Praise? Pra praise the Lord. A little bit louder than that. Praise the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. So this week, we were talking about shining the light of Jesus. And on day one, we learned that when we're in darkness, we shine. Jesus light. And on day two, when people don't get the law, shine Jesus light. Excellent. And when we are, what do we do? Shine Jesus light. And when we need help, what are we supposed to do? Shine Jesus light. So on day two, there was a man named Zah. Oh, you guys are good. It was a man named Zacchaeus, and he climbed up into the what? Sycamore tree. tree. And the reason it was titled when people don't get along, because Zacchaeus was a what? Tax collector. He was a tax collector, so the people didn't really, they didn't like him. They didn't like him. But when Jesus uh, was passing by, Zacchaeus got up into the sycamore tree, and Jesus said to Zacchaeus, I'm going to come to your house. And when Jesus came by, he made the di dif he made the difference. He made the difference as this kid ended up giving away. He, that's right. He ended up giving away half his goods because Jesus made the difference in his life. So when we shine Jesus' light, he will make the what? The difference. He will make the difference. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can just have my class just kind of line up right here side by side, side by side. Very good. Now we're just going to talk about the one day and we're going to talk about when people are sad. All right. And there, this sad moment had to do with some people who didn't like Jesus. Why didn't they like Jesus? Actually God's son. He said he was lying, right? That he wasn't actually God's son. And these people had it out for him the whole time when Jesus was living his life, right? So now we came to a point in time when things were getting sad and Jesus was on the cross because they were trying to put out his, they were trying to put out his light. So Jesus also saw his mother. She was sad, right? So um, what did Jesus do in order to comfort his mother? Asked his friends to take care of his mother. That's right. He asked his friend to take care of his mother. So, you know, when, so when people are sad. I and how do we become a friend of Jesus? How do we become a friend of God? How do we become a friend of God? Does anybody remember that answer? Believe Jesus. That's right. We become a friend of God when we believe in Jesus.
sing a little louder than before. Somebody say amen. Outstanding, 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 wonderful. Thank you so very much. BBS, 
2023. Amen. Wonderful. Woo! Wonderful. Absolutely marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Wow. Amen. That last part where they were doing the dance. Amen. I said, old to be young. Old to be young. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Minister White and Evangelist Family, Evangelist Donna, the entire staff. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous work in Jesus' precious name. Well, whew, my goodness. In fact, I, you did such a great job. Um, in fact, on the Friday night, they had the ice cream truck came. Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. The ice cream, they, get, they ice creamed out on Friday night. Amen. I don't think the ice cream truck's coming today, so we're okay. Amen. And Dr. Jackson, she made um, little Frisbees for them. Yes, and she gave, she gave me one. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to toss in the sanctuary because people says that would be near proper. But in any case, nice frisbee. Amen. I even colored my own frisbee. Colored my own frisbee. Amen. Outstanding. Well, we're in for a treat today. Additionally, amen, uh, Brother Artez is going to share with us. Amen. The word this morning. Come on, Brother Artez. Amen. This is my yeah. friend here. This is my friend. Size 12 sneaker. <laughs> it's just a matter of time, brother. Listen, take care of my sneakers, too. So, you know, that's important, okay? All right, let's receive uh, Brother Artez with a hearty praise the Lord this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. And a special thank you to Bishop Robertson and our youth leaders for another chance to focus on the Bible verse given to me to read on our last Youth Sunday. Right. Last time I read 1 Timothy 4th chapter 12th verse, Paul's letter to Timothy from the Life Application Bible says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, your love, your faith, and your purity. Then I said amen and sat down. <laughs> I was told afterwards that I could have said a little more. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Who is this Paul, and why is he writing to Timothy? I read in 1 Timothy, 1st chapter 13 verse, that Paul was once a violent man who persecuted Christians, but after God saved him, he became a Christian. <laughs> Timothy was a strong young Christian who became a leader in the church. Paul trained Timothy while Paul was on his missionary journey. Although Paul left Timothy behind, he still wrote to him to encourage and even call him son. Now what do I know? I'm only 11 years old, and I don't know how old Timothy was. But from this, I can see that if we have leaders like Paul to care for us and write to us, we can learn how to be good Christians. Timothy a list of things to do, just like when we are in school. Be nice, be safe, respect others, get your lesson, help when you can, and no fighting. I am so glad that I am learning what it is to be a good Christian from my family and this church. At home, we pray and we hold hands, and I am told to stop asking God for things, but thank him for what I have. I'm so glad that I'm with the children's church and do everything with them, like trips and youth Sundays. 
So I will end again with 1 Timothy 4th chapter 12 verse, the Life Application Bible. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, the way you live, your love, your faith, and your purity. 1 Timothy 4th chapter 12 verse in the NIV Adventure Bible, it gives five ways from Paul's writing. Even young people like myself and the children's church can be good Christians. It is titled, I Will Be an Example. In speech, I will not gossip. In life, I will do what pleases God. In love, I will care about others. In faith, I will pray and trust God. In purity, I will choose what is right. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we say amen? Outstanding. Outstanding. Amen. Wow. Be an example of the believer. Amen. While he is certainly speaking to young people, but he, 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 some of us older folk, he, we also understand the importance, amen, of being the examples. Amen. Don't let anybody take your youth away from you. Amen. Know who you are. In Christ Jesus. So glad for it again. Thank you, Brother Artez and the you know, Children's Ministry, EBS. Amen. Thank you so very much for a super par excellent job in Jesus' precious name. Thank God for our visitors who have come today to be part of our services. And shortly, momentarily, uh, Pastor Lawrence is going to share for about seven minutes or so. Amen. The word of God. We're going to be dismissed. We're going to pray. We're going to receive our offering. We'll go outside in fellowship. Amen. We're just going to have a hallelujah time. Thank you so very, very much. Jesus name. Pastor Lawrence, this time in Jesus' name. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, give God some praise in this place. You could do better than that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Come on, come on, young people, come on. Come on, stand to your feet. Y'all sat down long enough. Give God praise. Just clap your hands. Come on. You don't even know what you're clapping for, but you you sealing your future right now by clapping your hands. You don't understand what mama and daddy talked about. You don't understand what your grandma and your aunt. You don't even understand what RT is, but come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on. And then you just don't stop there, but just say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for little old me, my soul cries out. I thank God for saving. Point to yourself, me. Come on, come on. Look at somebody and say, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. I don't know why you called me up here after that young man. <laughs> All right. I don't know why you did that. Please don't do that again. <laughs> Can you show him some love at this time? Stand, stand up. Where's he at? Yeah, stand up. Y'all ain't encouraging him enough for me, I'm sorry. That young man did what many cannot do, stood before you and delivered a word of God from his heart. And so I commend you for what you did. And I pray that God blesses you just for what you did. I know for a fact that it's not easy to get up here. Can I, can I, can I talk to the young man and really and the young people? It's not easy to get up here and to talk, especially when you're so young. I used to be young, so I get it. I mean, I'd be trying to go to children's church, but I never could have did what you all did up there. There's not many more twirls and in, in, in all that in me left. Evan Evangelist Boone was like daring me. I bet you can't do it. I'm like, I bet I can't. <laughs> and I went and the little baby was out front. Just I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. But God is good. Can you show 
all the young people in the sanctuary some love at this time. God is good. To Bishop and Lady Robinson, to all of you that are here, I won't be long because I, I use probably like three of the seven minutes that I have. Amen. But God is good. Amen. Amen. Just something that I want to just make clear and make known because we're going to serve the enemy some notice right now is that God is not through with us yet. And if you think that it's happening now, just stay tuned, right? Like, you know, that's just more to come. There's more to come. There's, there's, Bishop, there's more to come. You know, this is just small. It's minute to what God is going to do and what he's going to do. And he, do I have a witness in this place that would touch and agree with me? That God is not through with us yet. There's more to this story. There's, there's more to this story, you know. And God is good. It, it's this song that Ashley uh, began to minister in our house. And I was listening to what she said. And she said in the song, she said, I've come a long way. And, and I know who I am. And there's so much goodness and grace much more than I deserve. And then she went on to say, because I know who I am, but I can't stay where I am. And she said, I've come this far by faith, and I just can't turn back. And then she went on to say, he's not done with me yet. <laughs> he's not done with me yet. There's so much more to this story, and you're not done with me yet. Could you look at somebody real quickly and just say, there's more to my story? I promise if you rock with me just for a few minutes, young people will get through this and we'll let God do what he needs to do. Amen. Really quickly, I'm just going to read Luke 7, right? And I'm going to start at verse 40. And it says, Jesus answered and said to them, Simon, I have something to say to you. He said, so say it, teacher. There's a certain creditor who has two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and one owed 50. When they had nothing with what to repay, he freely forgave them both. He said, tell me, therefore, which one? Will you love more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who forgave more. And he said to him, you have judged correctly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house and she gave me no, I mean, you gave me no water for my feet. But she washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Right. And she gave you gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman, somebody say, this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she have loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Can you do me a favor? This is my favorite scripture. I might get hype. I might get excited. But in Philippians 3, it says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. Somebody know what I'm talking about already. Uh, don't tell them your story yet. Brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things. I'm forgetting... I'm forgetting those things, Evangelist Boom, which are behind me. And I'm reaching forward to those things which are ahead of me. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm forgetting what's behind me. And I'm pressing forward to what's in front of me. Say, this praise cost a high price. Look at somebody else and say, there's a story behind my praise. Give God some praise in this place. Young people, if I could talk to the adults real quickly, I want to let them know is that there is a generation that's coming up right now that's not always going to be socially appropriate. When they come into the house of God, watch this, Evangelist Boom, Pastor Matthews, Brother Larry, you're going to see that these young people are not necessarily coming because you're such great leaders, but they're going to come because they love God and they need God. They're not going to come, praise team, because you sing so well or the musicians are there and the musicians are hyping them up, but they're going to say, excuse me, I can do without you because I need God. 
They're not going to wait to go through life, and they're not going to wait to go through trials and tribulations, but they're not even going to wait to have the testimony if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. But they will be able to stand and proclaim, watch what I'm telling you, in this season right here, you will have a generation of young people that will come in this house that will say, for God I'll live, for God I'll die. They'll understand that I'll praise God before it happens. They'll understand that I'll come into the house already with a praise on my lips. They'll understand that late in the midnight hour, or that God can turn it around. They'll understand, Bishop, that when they lay hands on their mamas and daddies, that demons and devils that taunted and taunted them for generations, that generational curses will and shall be cursed and broken in the name of Jesus. I'm just talking about this generation of young people that look different, they talk different, their hair is different, their clothes are different. I'm talking about the young people that God is about to send in the atmosphere. I'm not talking about later I'm talking about sooner that God got some young. They're not always going to talk to their neighbor. They're not, they're not always going to stand when you tell them to. They're not always going to be in the position they need to be. Sometimes Ortez is going to minister, and the best thing he can get out of his mouth is God is good, amen, and put the mic down to let God do what he needs to do. That's why he said, don't despise me as a young person, because unless you come as a child, Young people, I speak over you now that you won't come to play games. You didn't come to play Uno. You didn't come to play Monopoly. You ain't got time for jump rope. You ain't got time for hopscotch. You came to do the will of God. That is the generation. This is the generation of them that will seek his face, that will seek God's face. I'm talking about these are the young people. Some of y'all been sitting way too long. Continue to sit down because God is about to raise up this generation. Shekinah. I'm talking about where we can sit down because they going to stand up and say God is a good God. Yes, he I'm talking about young people, right? I'm talking, you know how we was in children's church. We was laughing and we was playing games. But I'm talking about young people. You're not going to wait for praise and worship. You're not going to wait until offering. You're not going to wait until bishops say anything. You're not going to wait until the musicians get it together. You're not going to wait for your mama and daddy. You're going to jump up, run out, get in alignment with God. I'm talking about you got young people, bishop, in this ministry that are going to prophesy. You got young people that are going to dance for the Lord. You got young people that Tell somebody, I'm sorry. It's just a story behind my prayer. It's just a story. I'm telling you something. You got young people that ain't going to wait for the adults to teach them because the word is going to be inside of them. You might as well get ready to sit down, Sister Donna, because God got young people that's about to come. Young people tend to push me into the presence of God because I was once there and I didn't know what was going on when I felt like giving up, when I felt like throwing in the towel. It was not an adult that got me back into the presence of God. There was a baby that said, hold on, just a little while longer. I'm almost done. There's a story. There's a story. These young people. God is about to equip them to be able to set an atmosphere. I'm talking about when demons and devils try to come in the atmosphere, bishop, and cause chaos. And, and now you got to stay up all night long trying to, trying to war with the devil. You have a group of young people, I promise you, sooner rather than later, that will know how to seize wherever they are to set an atmosphere in this place. When their mom and daddy can't get out of bed, that young person will be in their room declaring to God, Lord, do it. And such a trembling will take place in this place, Angie, where God will set an atmosphere that when the lame shall walk, a blind man will see, a deaf ear will hear. I'm talking about young people. I'm telling you what I know, Tiffany. I'm telling you what I know. Because God is about to do it in this season right here where he's about to set a young person. Yeah, <laughs> 
You thought they was dancing and shouting and they was getting it and, and my knees was hurting while they was getting it. But what I saw in the spirit realm was a whole bunch of warriors sending a signal to the enemy saying we well on our way and we serving you notice now that your time is limited. This woman in this <laughs> scripture, she knew something about getting into the presence of God and knowing at all costs I got to give God what I got to give him. And so she reached into her stuff. Every now and then, Pastor Boone, you got to reach into your own stuff. I got to reach into my own stuff. Does anybody got stuff in this place today? I got to reach into my own memory. I got to reach into my own flashbacks. Every now and then, young people, you going to have to stop Turn around and see where the Lord has brought you from. I dare about five people in this place. Get up on your feet. Just look and say, God, I know it was you right there. God, I know it was you there. If it had not been for you right there, God, I would have been. I should have been. I could have been. Somebody thank God with a should have been praise. And Yeah, and, and, and the thing I like about it even more and I'm done, Bishop, I promise you, is that she didn't care who was in the midst. I'm talking about a group of young people, Shekinah. They ain't going to care about knowing from Genesis to Revelation. They ain't going to have no Shanana, no Tinana, no none of that stuff. They going to know how to call on the name of I'm talking about the name of Jesus that my grandmama called on. I'm talking about that y'all ain't got no grandmamas in here. Some of y'all ain't y'all got to understand you are on a lineage. Some of y'all survive because your grandmama prayed for you. Because your great-grandmama prayed for you. Because your auntie prayed for you. Because your mama prayed for you. Because your daddy prayed for you. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on them. I don't know, that's gone, but listen, let me tell you something. God is about to raise up the young people that's going to create a story, such a story, Bishop. I'm talking about when you come in the atmosphere of this place, you're going to think that you got it rehearsed. You're going to think that you got it all together. But when the glory of the Lord hits this place through a child, when they get up in the atmosphere and God say, that was what I was waiting on. Somebody that I can work through. Somebody that don't want to do it their way. Somebody that will let go and let God look at somebody and say, I got a story to tell. Young people, you'll get there. If you ain't went through life, keep on living because I promise you, you're going to go through something. You ain't got a story right now, but I promise you, if you keep on living, God will give you such a story when everything is going all around you, it will pass over you. When sickness is hitting everybody else, it will pass over you. Why bad grades are hitting everybody else? Disobedience with everybody else, it Y'all, like the parents should be celebrating right there. Say, not as for me in my house, we going to serve the Lord. I dare everybody in this place that got a young person that you watching over. Just go. Yeah, it's going to pass over you. It's going to pass over my child. It's Man, I, I got to go. I can't stay. I, got, I, I said seven. She reached into her stuff. She pulled out an alabaster box. Y'all know the story. What one man thought was trash, she knew that it was a value, and she surrendered it to the Lord. So, so let them keep on talking about y'all. <laughs> let them keep, let's, let them, I can't believe they do it. I can't believe your hair is blonde at the top. I can't believe they wearing short. I can't believe they doing it like that. Let them keep on talking about y'all. Because the same ones that talked about. She said, what I have, my story. And evangelist, what, what, what was happening, and I, I read this bishop, and I promise you, I was sitting there. You will see, you know me, I'm a people person, so I like to read people. You got two different type of people that we really fool with on Sundays, right? Can I say that in church? But it's like two different types. 
You got some somebodies. <laughs> and then you got broken people. With what she had, she poured it out. This is her story. This is my life. After everything I've been through, I still got to praise. You got some iffy people that will give just enough. <laughs> They'll let you see just enough because they don't want you to know everything. Young people, watch this. They'll, okay, that's, I don't know why they're doing all that, all that jumping and shouting. I don't understand. Sit them young people down. They don't, that hallelujah, that's over. They don't know the hell you've been through. They don't know what it took to get here. They don't know what you survived. And they sit Oh, praise the Lord, Angie, you look so blessed today. God, I can't stand her. <laughs> but then you have people that are broken. People with real stories. I'm telling you what he showed me, real people with stories to tell. And when you broke an evangelist after everything you've been through, you can't help but to let out what's inside of you. That's why we dancing. That's why we shouting. That's why we singing. That's why our tears is preaching. That's why they praise dancing. That's why we giving God the glory. Because after everything we've been through, we can't teeter totter with some of y'all. We can't be sometimey with some of y'all. What's on the inside of me has got to come out of me. I got a story. I remember saying it. Hubba! He said, Mr. Lawrence, well, what's your story? I said, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Then I went on and said, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. And it didn't stop there. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels back. Y'all ain't hearing me in this play. I need 10 people to get up on your feet and know you got a real story down on the inside of you. After all the hell that I've been through, I'm still here. That's my story. Drugs didn't get you. That's my story. Alcohol ain't take you out. That's my story. Yeah, I loved them, but God loved them more. That's my story. It may not be what I want it to be but thank God it ain't what it used to be somebody give God a story praise in this place to uh, NPR on the radio and every now and then they have this called Story Corps. Story Corps. And people come on there and they tell those stories about what situations are and it's in the uh, library uh, books and, and the, you can go and listen to them again and again. Because of where the Lord has brought you for, from you do have a story. You have a story of God's goodness and God's grace in your life. You may not understand it right now. Amen. But you understand it better by and by. Say amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Lawrence. Amen. This, this morning, God is so worship. God is so awesome. We worship him in spirit and in truth. We believe he's doing what he's promised he would do in, our, in all of our lives. Momentarily, we're going to ask you just to bow your heads in prayer. You may be here this, this morning. And you have 
been facing are facing sometimes what they call insurmountable situations. But I heard the writer say that God specializes in things that are impossible. He specializes. He specializes. And he can do what no other can do. If it is your desire to be prayed for right now, we just please stand at your feet like we are. Thank you. We're not as you come to the front. It could be for a multitude of things. We're praying for our brother Lee. He's heading back to uh, Jamaica. Uh, Sister Darrell's uh, brother. He's done an excellent job. He came overseas and was working. He worked. He, he cooked and he worked outside. And we appreciate what God has done. Thank you, sir. As we're standing here right now, sisters and brothers, would you bow your heads? There are those who are facing surgeries this week. There are those who are facing things they can't even explain to someone else. But I'm grateful that we serve a God who sees and knows. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads to you right now. We came into the sanctuary, Lord, worshiping. We came in talking about how great our God is. We bragged and we are bragging on you. Because inside our very being, we know who you really are. And though the enemy comes up and tries to infiltrate, but I'm grateful, Lord, that our confidence is in you. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Comfort those, Lord, who have lost loved ones. Give them comfort. Lord, help us to help them. Speak to them, Lord. Speak to us to speak to them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the touching of the physical body, the mental mind. Thank you, Lord, for touching spiritually. Lord, we are not pouting, not uh, sitting in the corner crying the blues. But we know somewhere, somehow, somewhere and somehow you're going to do what you promised you would do. And for that, we give you the glory and the praise and the honor. Lord, now we continue to pray for these young people, these young adults, those in schools, those heading towards schools, those in college, and those are going to preschool. Oh God, oh God, what a great future, what a great future. What a great future you have given unto us. We rise up. We rise up. David said he was, yo, he was old, but now he's young. He's young and not old. And truly, Lord, though many years have passed for others, we stand up and see your goodness. Because of you, we're able to say, God is great and he's great to be praised. Release your virtue upon and in us for thy glory. And honor we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Put your hands together and glorify God. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, for the work of God being manifested and done in our lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Momentarily, we're going to receive our offering and give God the glory and the praise for, amen, what he has blessed, blessed us with. Amen. We say here at Christ's gospel simply this. You may possess much, but you own nothing. Everything you have and I have belongs to God. We must be good stewards who God has placed in our care. So through our tithing, fuel off and building fund mortgage, however you're giving, amen, it's for the glory of God, it's for his honor, and certainly for his praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you need change, See Deacon Alfonso, he be in the front. You can give certainly by electronic means, Cash App, PayPal, Givelify. And we still accept cash.
checks. Be accepted. Now, young, that's right. Step, yes. Wonderful. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Amen. Let's just have already passed the envelopes. Amen. If you have not received one, just raise your hand real quickly. Amen. Thank you. Let us all stand to prepare ourselves to give. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, all that we have needed, your hands have provided for us. How do we say thanks for all the things you've done for us? Lord, we are walking in obedience to your word. We believe, Lord, that you're well able to do what your word says you can do. We walk by faith and not by sight. We give by faith. We live by faith. Because we do such, Lord Jesus, we honor you in our giving. And we know Lord, that which is being given this very morning will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. This we do pray in Jesus' precious, vivacious name. Amen. And amen. I'm going to ask you if you please remain standing where you face your left. And there should be a smiling usher directing you to the front this time period. Thank you in Jesus' name.